Uh, I am doing this uh, video on the concept of mean absolute error. Uh, before we get into understanding what mean absolute error is all about, uh, let, us, uh, let me give you a little bit of background. Whenever uh, we uh, are doing any research or we are conducting some experiments in a laboratory, we make measurements. And whenever we make a measurement, errors do creep in. It's nearly impossible to have a measurement which does not have error in it. So it becomes very important that we are aware about the type of the error, the magnitude of the error, before we draw any conclusions based on that particular measurement. In a previous video, I talked about two types of error, systematic errors and random errors. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at measuring those errors and getting an idea about that error. Uh, let me give you one more example. Let us say there is um, an engineering drawing and a person maybe in a factory needs a shaft. Let us say this is a shaft and uh, you know, he needs a shaft of let us say length mm, 15 centimeter. Right? Now, he needs a shaft of 15 centimeter and he would give this drawing to a manufacturing person who would make this shaft of 15 centimeter. Now, it is, as I said earlier, it is impossible to make a shaft which is exactly 50 centimeter. There will be some amount of error in it. In such a situation, what is expected is the person who needs this shaft says that I need a shaft of length 15 centimeter plus minus, uh, say for example, 0.2 centimeter. In effect, what the person is saying is that if you make this shaft of 15 plus 0.2 centimeter, 2. 15 minus 0.2 centimeter, I'll be fine with it. So what happens is you may get a shaft whose uh, length is between 15.2 uh, centimeter to 14.8 centimeter, right? And if the length of this shaft, which is made by the manufact manufacturing person, is in between these two limits, it is accepted. If it falls outside this, then that particular piece is rejected. So this is a real life application of error. This particular error that we talked about over here is known as the mean absolute error. Right? Let us try to understand how we calculate this. Uh, let us continue with this example of a shaft. Let us say we are making a shaft right, and uh, we want to, to uh, measure the length of this particular shaft. So this is the length of the shaft and we are make, taking readings of this particular shaft. So what I'll do is I'll take a number of readings. I'll take reading A1, A2, A3, a n, right? So these are the readings I have taken of this particular length L, right? Then I, what at the first step that I'll do is find the mean of this reading, which I'll denote by A bar. So A bar will be equal to A1 plus A2 plus A n divided by number of readings. So this will be the value of A bar, right? And I'll take this mean reading as the true value of this bar. Right. So I have taken n number of readings for measuring this, right? and what I have done is I have taken the mean value and I will accept this as the true value of the length of this particular bar. Right? So this is the true value. The second step I will do is find, find the absolute error, absolute error in each reading, in each reading. Right? I have taken number of readings, I have taken n readings, I want to find out the error in each reading. So the, and the error I will denote by delta A, for example. So when I write delta A1, it means the absolute error in the first reading, A1. Delta stands for error, so delta A1 is the absolute error in the first reading. So delta A would be given by absolute value of A bar minus A1. So this will give me delta A1. Similarly, I will get delta A2 is equal to A bar minus A2 so on and so forth and delta a n is equal to a bar minus a n okay. so this is how we find out the error in each reading what we are doing is we are trying to find out how much this reading deviates from the true value a bar minus a1 so when i do a bar minus a1 i get an idea about how much this reading deviates from the mean value and therefore we call it the absolute error and we're going to take the absolute value we're not going to look at the positive sign or negative sign, which is going to take the difference between these two. So I get the absolute errors. Okay, let's move further. Now, I want to find out the mean absolute error of this. Uh, right? So the mean absolute error, the mean absolute error will be given by 
this is the mean of the absolute error. So as, as, a, as shown over here, we have found out all the errors. I have to take mean absolute error, means I have to find out the mean of all these errors. So mean absolute error will be given by delta A1 plus delta A2 plus delta An divided by N. So this will give me the mean absolute error, which I'll denote by delta A bar. So this is delta A bar. This particular formula gives me delta A bar. This is the symbol that we will use for mean absolute error. Because delta A represents error and we have taken the mean of that. So this represents mean absolute error. There is one more thing which we need to know is percentage error. Sometimes errors are given in terms of percentage error. And the percentage error is given by delta A bar. That means the mean absolute error upon A bar into 100. So mean absolute error divided by the true value into 100. This will give me percentage error. Okay. What I intend to do now for the next couple of minutes is take an actual example so that you will be able to understand this much better. Let us say we are taking readings of length L and let us say the readings are in centimeters and they are 6.0, 5.5, 6.0, and 6.5. Supposing there is a shaft and I want to know its exact value, so I take 5 readings, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and these are the readings that I get. Right? Now, the first step is I will find the mean value of this. So, the, the, the mean value of this, is this will be the true value. Let me call this A, right? So, that so I will get A bar. A bar will be 6.0 plus 5.5 plus 6.0 plus 6.0 plus 6.5 divided by five readings so divided by five this will give me if you do this calculation I'll get six so a bar is equal to six so the true value this is the true value of the reading so I'll say that the length of this bar is six centimeter but now I have not yet uh, taken into account the error which was made while taking these readings so I need to find out the mean absolute error right? so what I do is I'll find out the absolute error so delta a1 is equal to the true value 6 minus the actual reading 6.0 so 6 is equal to 0 delta a2 again will be the true value minus the reading 5.5 is equal to 0.5 delta a3 will be 6 minus 6 is equal to 0 and that will also be equal to delta a4 because a4 is also 6 and delta a5 will be equal to 6 minus 6.5 is equal to 0.5. Here you will get minus 0.5 but we are taking absolute value so we take 0.5. To find out the mean absolute error delta A bar I have to add up all the errors and divide them by n. Right? Delta A1 plus delta A2 to delta n. So if I add this 0 plus 0.5 plus 0 plus 0.5 I will get 1. 0.5 plus 0.5 divided by the number of readings is 5 so I get 1 by 5 and therefore delta A bar will be equal to 1 upon 5 which is 0 0.2 centimeter. So I have got delta A bar, this is the 0 0.2 centimeter and therefore the reading will be mentioned as the true value is 6, 6 plus minus 0 0.2 centimeter. That means 6 minus 0 0.2 to 6 plus 0 0.2. That means 5.8 to 6.2 centimeter. Okay, what this means is that we have measured, we have taken the reading and we have these, these particular readings, the average value comes out to be 6, the error is 0 0.2. What it means is that the value or the length of this particular rod could be anywhere between 5.8 to 6.2 centimeter. Its mean value is 6, so, but the actual value could hover between these two values. Right? So, with this uh, uh, I think you've got a fair idea of what mean absolute error is and the real life applications of mean absolute error. Thank you.